given 20 and variable plus 1 has been asked right so what if I run this I get the value 21 right the total output yes, is 21 sir. but the question is asking that what uh, just a minute yeah it is asking that what does the variable contain after the following code runs right so what is the value of variable you, you have printed the variable plus 1 right so it is asking the value of the variable so what will be the value of the variable let's see does the value of variable changes so variable still remains ready because we haven't assigned the values right we have just added and just printed it like how it will look variable plus one is equal to 21 if we write that variable is equals to variable plus one then the values will be 21 clear but sir they haven't told that the variable value is 20 in the equation and see it is just written like variable is equal to 20 and when we run this couple of codes what will the value of the variable that is sir but in the equation they have given only variable is equal to 20 variable plus 1 hmm yeah so variable is equal to 20 is the first line next line is variable plus 1 so from here what we can see what is the variable value okay if i yes, say sir. x is equal to 5 and i say x square minus y square but after then i ask what is the value of x Y square is not defined. Mm -hmm. The x remains the same. There is no such differences because I am not going to print the line for the equation I am writing. I just want the values previously. That is like a tricky question. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, so today we'll be going through the assignment operators, the boolean operators. And calendar was easy. The date and times we'll be doing today. Okay. Just the moment. So let's start it, right? So let's look on to the assignment operators. Then the assignment operators is something like yesterday we look on to the arithmetic. Did we look on to assignment now? No, we have done assignments to yesterday. Mm. So let's go ahead with that now assignment has been completed let's go to the comparison comparison is not done i think so comparison okay we have done that too so let me see once if arithmetic comparison assignment has been completed and an hour So in class 12, you might have read about the logical operators and or and not. 
even in the physics you might have read around like and gate not gate and gate analysis right so in here in cs it's like very simple you only have some boolean results okay like some true and false that's it right the true and false like if i say true right and false here gives some of the terms called as truth tables okay now you might all have read about the truth tables basically which gives you the values of the truthness of any of the things right oh okay. so like if i say true and false right there are three terms in the logical operators and or and not that's it three okay so if i say true and false the values will be always true right so there are conditions like if i say that in the and in the and only when conditions are true okay only you will get true when all the conditions are true in the or even if a single condition is true right and what is the role of not just to reverse the results clear so and will return you true only when all the conditions are true or will be giving you true even if a single condition is true and not will just reverse the results clear to everyone the three operators the workings of the three uh, separate operators right you'll see it how it works see? and for the true for uh, some more things are there for the true we can write as one okay so yeah for the false we can write it as zero now here for the and we can write a symbol here also that is for or we'll be using a symbol okay like this and this is not going to have any symbols oh, it's not this. so these are the things which should be uh, kept in mind like we'll be using this okay now so true and false if i write true and false giving you the result false because one condition is true and the second is false next false and true now false is there in the left hand side and true in the right hand side similarly true and true and these can be the four uh, possibilities for true and false true and true false and false true false and true and false and false right so these are the results and you see only when both the conditions are true you are getting the correct results now this can also be done with one and zero one and zero result you see zero okay similarly one and zero and one 
1 and 1, 0 and 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Right? The things. Now, if we use or okay, in the or case, true. True or false? False or true? True or true? False or false? So if I see this results, you will see true all the sides, right? Only when the conditions or you can say with only the both the conditions or all the conditions are false, you are going to get false. Otherwise, things would be true, right, in the or case. So we can say 1 or 0, 0 or 1, 1 or 1, 0 or 0. Same results, 1, 1, 1, 0, okay. So these are called as booleans boolean values right boolean of one is true and the boolean of zero is false what do you write boolean of three so get true right what do you write boolean of minus three so you get true only when it is zero it, you are going to get false clear It is clear to everyone having any doubts. Uh, sir, I have a little doubt. Mm -hmm, ask. Uh, uh, sir, when, sir, can you go a little upstairs? Just a minute. Yeah. Uh, sir, a little more. In which you give that heading. All right. Uh, sir. So, so the heading you gave as logical operator mm -hmm. from which you convert it from cell to markdown mm. and sir and for that condition which we are mentioning for and or and not mm -hmm. is it the same same procedure we have to follow we have to convert it from cell to markdown that's one from cell to markdown right like from code code to markdown you're asking right you can say it like just like Click on any cell, okay, and then press escape and then M. It will be converted. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. If you, if you want Thank like, you very much. Uh -huh. If you want like line numbers, you can go with L. You'll be getting line number one, line number two, three, four, five, six. Escape L okay, will sir. be giving you line numbers. Yes, sir. Okay, save escape R will be giving you the raw and read convert. And it will be changing as accordingly. What it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So this is like working of the assign assign the logical operators. Right. Now there are membership operators. How it works? Let's see. Let's say you have a list of elements. So, or let's say you have a list of numbers. Okay. Some selectively uh, odd numbers and even numbers. Let's say. Or any numbers, just for example.
see so like if you have a uh, some programs which consists of some lines you can make it like this okay so in code random we are using the random module i'll let you know what exactly it is how it works okay now uh, let's see g and j are some two kind of list now blank list these are we will be studying what are list okay and for i in range 50 okay h is equals to random dot rand range minus 200 to 200 okay now if h is greater than 0 okay if now the values what here it is generated basically minus 200 to 200 if the h are greater than 0 then uh, we'll say that j dot append it to h that is basically uh, we are adding in the positive one or uh, the values which are greater than 0 and in the lesser one we are adding it to the head like g dot append of h okay if it is less than that okay so it, let's run this and let's see the things okay now if we print the g and h so in the g what you will find all the negative numbers okay and the same you'll find in h oh sorry j we have all the positive numbers okay so there is no such linearity that only these much negative and these much positive should be there if you run this if you run this again things will be same right the numbers will be different okay so there is no such uh, linearity here now let's say uh, the boolean results you are getting okay if you apply the bool of head to everyone see zero is very less probability that you will be getting any zeros right same would be the working in the random so how random exactly works like it gives you any random number between any ranges okay so when we talk about range if i say that there is a range of numbers from 25 to 50 so it means that there would be the numbers starting from 25 26 27 something like this and it will go till 49 okay not 50 it will go to 49 right so same if i am writing that a range of numbers from minus 200 to 200 means that minus 200 to 199 if i remove this to 201 it would affect some of the results and you can see the zero here hmm? the negatives are greater the positives will be quite less right that is now every time you run there is no such linearity as i said the things could be less or things could be greater okay so these are the results right now so range works according to this okay it's starting from minus 200 going to 201 all right now so random something works like if you say random dot a rand range random range okay of any numbers like 12 to 15 or 12 to 20 so you will be getting results starting from 12 ending at 19 okay so if i run this the 5 14 between 12 and 19 again the results again the 14 okay. i run this 13 18 15 okay the results would be always between the 12 and the 19 what you are expecting right now same if I say that here in the random dot rand range and the numbers if I make something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and same here like this. Okay. So some six digit numbers. But on this what you see there is a kind of an OTP. If you can say OTPs are nothing but like this, right? Would you generate like this the things? Right. And what we can do is we can write here. just adding the sentence right like this and we can say here as this stopping at here like this and you can see uh, basically we have to add it here so it would work better mm, str of this okay and let's add a print statement here just so g str of this is your one time verification code let's run this so you get something like this on your mobile applications this is your one-time google verification code 
sometimes facebook password is stored or sometimes any link is being given to you right like uh, let's say if you are printing something so printing uh, https and www.google.com running this kind of a thing gives you a link right when you print a link a link will appear and we'll see that how basically we can open link from the uh, codes from here you can write i'll give you codes from where you can directly access internet from the notebooks even okay okay moving ahead uh, today uh, you will be having classes at till four right because um i have the ml batch also and there we are going to start after if so we are going to learn the data types there right so you will be also learning data types today and from so tomorrow you'll be having a very small like uh, kind of a test you can say oh, okay very small test for this right and then we can like go with the different data science modules okay so we'll complete python very soon okay. so uh, let's move ahead let's continue with the if and else conditions now let's talk about what are conditions okay so coming to the conditions and the statements conditions and statements are of uh, three types in python you have if you have else and you have elif now else is something when you use it like when you have only two conditions so one condition is not working obviously you are going to go in the second conditions now when you have three conditions you will first check the first condition whether it is working or not right and if it is not working then you are going to check for the second condition so in the second condition you cannot use again the if right so in that case you are going to use elif okay so elif is for the second condition and again like if you are not having any of the conditions you are going to use the last condition that is the else condition right now in case say that you have five conditions right so the first condition is not working so obviously you have used if case there right so if condition is not working then you would be using the elif condition for the second for the third and for the fifth and there is no such compulsions that you have to use else every time right so it depends on you how you are using okay so you can use or you cannot use like it depends on you okay see uh, so things how things work in if and else let's see it okay let's see the examples like let's say if you want to check whether an uh, number is an even number or an odd number very easy statement we are taking okay so uh, we can take some inputs from the user uh, we have started the input yesterday yes input statement we have done yeah we have done yesterday how we can take inputs okay so let's say that uh, we are taking input from a user and then uh, giving the results to the user that is a number is a prime or uh, sorry is a even number or an odd number right so what you can do is we can say a is equals to input integer input obviously and then we'll say enter the number to check okay and simple like if whatever the number user is giving if it is divided by 2 and is giving the remainder as equals to 0 the module is gives you the remainder right so if it is giving you the 0 then you can just print that it is an even number or like number found even And if it is an odd so there are only two conditions right so there is no case for using elif here you can write elif if a is not equals like in else you don't have any conditions to go or any conditions to check you only print the result like if it, if something is not happening then only and only the result what is being left would be written inside the else okay so here we can print
okay that's it so let's run this let's say if i'm writing minus 34 so number found even hmm? uh, 48 number found even 0 number found even 75 number found odd 73 number found odd 3 number found odd clear to everyone very easy example right so more can be done with the use of else and if like we'll see it like that. okay see uh, if you want to check whether a number is a negative number or a positive number like that here we have done right in the previous example we are checking here like if h is greater than 0 then it is a positive number if it, uh, otherwise it is a negative number right our questions can be uh, like uh, check whether a triangle can be formed with three different sides or not you will get this questions in your assignment okay So let's see that. So this could be the program of Okay, now uh, let's say the sides. So let's having the decimal points also because the de decimals can be also given in the size of the triangle, right? So let's say the float, and uh, then we can say input. Enter the side A. Okay. Same, we can copy it to reduce our time. one and two okay b and c now what are the things if it is three sides how we check whether a triangle can be formed or not yeah anyone can tell how we are going to check it three sides you have how will you check whether triangle can be formed? Anyone quickly? How will you check it? Coordinates. Okay. Any different way? All right, you can use some formulas like if you have having in directions of the uh, triangles, you can use the formulas even, right? All right, let's see. So coordinates, someone is saying we can use some additions like two sum of two sides are greater than the three sides, the very simple one, right? So you can say that if the sum of the first two sides is greater than the third side, Okay, and again, if the sum of the two sides is greater than the third side, again, and if the sum of the two sides is greater than the third side, it could be done. Why we are using and? Because all the results have to be true. If any of them become false, our answer will be false. 
or it will be a wrong answer right so everything to be is to be correct okay so so if these three conditions are correct that is if three conditions are true then we can say a triangle can be formed with the sides A, B and C. I'll be using a format mesh, uh, option. You'll uh, learn this today, right? How we'll be writing it. Like A, B and C. Okay. And the area would be triangle area. What is the area of a triangle? Yeah, anyone quickly. What is the formula for finding the area of a triangle? One half into height into uh, base. Uh, half base into height. Right, so you can like height, the base, and the height. So height you can find it using the perpendicular by dividing things. Oh, let's remove the area. So you can take it like if you want to represent it. Uh, oh, I haven't used the. That's a three, four, and five. Triangle can be formed. That's that's easy. Right. We see it as a right angle triangle over there. Uh, else, um, we can print triangle cannot be formed. That's it. So if we say three, six, and five. So triangle can be formed with the sides because 3 plus 6 greater than 5, 6 plus 5 greater than 3. So if I run this minus 3, uh, 4 and 6, so triangle cannot be formed obviously, right? So you can make things like in, if, in the case of an if and else, I believe that it would be easier to you for understanding it. Okay, so if and else could be uh, very easy in these cases, like if you are understanding even a leap, whether a year is a leap year or not, and a lot of things are being left with that, right? So till here, it is clear to everyone. Uh, just a moment, let me see whatever we have discussed just now. For the machine learning. Is the GNS strings we have taken all right okay hmm so uh, let's discuss the string methods okay what are string how we define the strings we can say strings uh, strings could be equals to uh, the characters inscribed within quotes and they can be a single quote a double quote or a triple quote hmm three kinds like this okay so this can be of three different types right now so in the strings there are a lot of um, functions to go through right like in the complex and integers and all so let's see what all are the functions of the strings we can find it using the directory of the strings sorry str so you find it from the capitalize case fold center count and code and within and all of those things right now let's see it so str is the type here like if you are checking the type of any string so something written inside any of the codes you'll find us to be as a string 
so it's a type of an str right now in the string there are a lot of things let's say if there is a word called as alphabet and i want to check whether this is an alphabet or a number or whatever it is so if i check that it is an alphabet so is there any of the uh, method to check for that so is alpha is there to check whether this is an alphabet or not right so there are a lot of functions you need to go through so is alpha let's say it's true it is an alphabet now what if i write some numbers with this is alpha become false right now so what is this type then so is this a number is this a number for number what we have for number we have is numeric is digit if we say is numeric so false again because it's not complete numeric right then what it is is digit so again it is false because it, it's not complete numeric right so what could be the functions then is digit is identifier lower numeric printable is space title upper nothing up from here right so what you can say is it is a type of an alpha numeric right so you can say it as this ln that is true because it is a kind of an alpha numeric okay now for the numeric what you'll have to do is let's say the numbers are there you can go for is numeric or you can go with the is digit right we want to see the definitions of both of them or you can just write the help of str dot is numeric so this is the definition of that numeric one and if you want for going with the digit you can go with the is digit options you can find the digits okay like that hmm? so digit returns true if string is a digit and it returns true if string is a numeric string that's it okay same things that there no such difference of that. only the words difference okay. uh now we have some of the things like so let's go with that uh, let's say a word is there called as republic now if you want to see like capitalize every of the alphabet here so let's say upper let's see at republic and same word let's say one is there in the lower case lower now this can also be done in two different things using the case fold when you are going for the caseless comparisons you can use the case fold now if there is if you want to case basically if you want to swap the cases there is a swap case function like if you have w o n you want to swap case so you can say swap case so it would be printed as the upper case will be in the lower the lower will be in the upper and so that's the things okay the method what i have used just here like if i say this plus this now what is this basically the braces plus braces right if I used to format this and used to write something over there, I'll say 2 plus 3. That's it. Mm. Wrong spelling. Just a moment. Yeah. So 2 plus 3. Okay. And if I say this is equals to this, that means if I run this now, you see tuple index out of range. So the index what I am writing here is out of range because there are 3 of the braces and I have only given. So let's say 3 plus 2 equals 5. Sorry. It depends on you what you write. Okay. 2 plus 3 equals 5.0, whatever. Depends on you. These are the format options. Now, if you want to split something, like uh, let's say there is a version I'm using gmail.com and there is something called as gmail.in. So I want to check whether this is in or com. How will I check? So I can write gmail.com dot split. Split using the dot. From where I want to check. So where if I use split, what will happen uh, from here with the whatever the I have selected, like I have selected dot. So from here, 
the gmail will in the left hand side and this will come in the right hand side so i want to check the right hand side whether the right hand side is com or in right so i can just use this and i can see two different terms gmail and com so i can easily write minus one and i can see the com over there we'll be doing indexing today we'll find over there okay okay so that is the different case right same you can be uh, used like if you have any file name and you want to check the extensions so if you use dot split you can easily find the extension of the file every time whatever the extension would be right like it is a book dot pdf so if you use split here won't be getting the pdf okay like that and the uh, string would be like if i say you x is equals to a b c d e f g h i j k l Okay, till there. If I say y is equals to g h i j k g h i j okay. Now if I say the membership operators, if I say that x is there in y or not, so it is false. If I say y is there in x or not, it is true because all the elements of y is there in the x, right? Okay. Similarly, if I say x not in y. That will be a true. But I say y not in x will be a false statement. Right? Now from here you can say that y is substring of x. Right? Things. Right? Substring of x x you can say okay. that function is not there but you can say that y is a substring of set that this will learn in the sets okay so these are some of kind of the functions what you need to go through right so lower split you can go by using all one by one like if you want to see any examples for any of the things like alpha or ascii or find or format like if you want to learn what find works how find works you can just go with the help of str uh, not here like dot find so it will say you dot str dot find uh, returns the lowest index in the s where the substring sub is found right like if i say for, uh, find the index position of d right so how it will be x dot find the index position of the d that's it like it is three so I hope it is clear, right? So till here, uh, let's keep it till here for today. Okay.